We're now welcoming uh, Thomas Lembong on the, on the talk. Uh, you're the chairman of the Indonesian Investment Coordination Board, or BKPM. Welcome to the talk. Thank you for having uh, me. Why was it important for you to uh, open and address the, the first Asian edition of uh, this Mondial of the French Foreign Trade Advisors? I think uh, it's a number of things. Um, there are historic things happening. Uh, such as actually uh, the rise of hundreds of millions of people uh, around Asia into the global middle class. Uh, and uh, more immediately, uh, I think uh, in connection with today's event, uh, I admit a lot of excitement myself on the election of President Emmanuel Macron. And uh, at the same time, uh, we have the fortunate coincidence that there's a lot of exciting things happening between French companies and Indonesian companies in the private sector sphere. Uh, so I thought it was uh, it was really uh, worth it for me to come and uh, participate in this in this event. What kind of message did you want to convey about Indonesia? I think clearly that Indonesia is at the center of a lot of the dynamic trends around the Asia Pacific region. If you look at, for example, the massive and historic uh, One Belt, One Road infrastructure development program that China has launched, uh, a good part of it runs through Indonesia, right? Uh, in particular, uh, what is called the Maritime Silk Road, the 21st century Maritime Silk Road. A lot of it runs straight through Indonesia. Uh, through the streets of Malacca uh, and we are uh, an anchor uh, for Southeast Asia and the Asia Pacific uh, within these uh, these big uh, programs and developments like uh, One Belt One Road. France is a bit of a black ship uh, in terms of foreign trade compared to its uh, main European counterparts. Um, in which areas do you believe that the bilateral uh, relationship uh, could improve? You mentioned the digital economy earlier. Uh, what absolutely, else? Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> I think um, the uh, transformation of the global economy uh, through digital uh, tools uh, opens up a completely new set of opportunities. Uh, I think uh, it opens the possibility of France and Indonesia leapfrogging altogether, right? Uh, going beyond uh, the traditional industries uh, or uh, reimagining uh, old industries uh, using digital tools. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, I prefer to look at uh, uh, themes or strengths and I think there's no doubting in my mind uh, the quality of French craftsmanship uh, in machinery, uh, in interiors, uh, design, uh, lifestyle. Uh, only two days ago, uh, our president, President Jokowi, addressed uh, the annual meeting of our Indonesia Chambers of Commerce, and he raised uh, the issue of, uh, again, the hundreds of millions of people around Asia uh, joining the global middle class. And what differentiates the global middle class is lifestyle. And nobody knows lifestyle like the French. So I think uh, I'm very excited about uh, the, the many, many possibilities for, for cooperation between French industry uh, and, and Indonesian industry and, and commerce. Let's talk about uh, Indonesia for a while. Um, the country, as many other countries are, is, is a pretty tough place to do business. Uh, what are the BKPM and the Indonesian government uh, doing to actually improve the, the business environment and the business climate? Yes, it's uh, definitely uh, a challenge that all of us uh, developing countries are facing, right? Uh, we have to streamline the bureaucracy. Uh, we have to uh, reduce uh, corruption dramatically. Um, and we just have to speed up everything. Uh, as President Jokowi has pointed out, uh, in the era of digital, it's no longer that the large uh, defeat the small, but rather that the fast defeat the slow. Uh, so we have to speed up everything. I think um, a few things. Uh, 
I think, of course, we have we cannot get away from the details, the nuts and bolts, uh, customs procedures at the port, customs procedures at the airport, uh, work permits for expatriate workers. Uh, it's now been two years since I joined the cabinet and therefore joined the bureaucracy. Uh, and we're continuing to work persistently and diligently to streamline the bureaucracy. Uh, sorry to repeat or to come back to this again. I think uh, using digital tools uh, can speed things up dramatically. Uh, there's one legislation that says that for a permit to have legal validity, it needs the signature of a government official. Uh, well, there's not a law, fortunately, which provides a legal basis for digital signature. So we're designing a system where with one pin or with one biometric verification, you should be able to issue 30 or 40 or 50 digital signature in, signatures in one go, right? So the legislation uh, requirement is fulfilled. There's a signature uh, using another legislation, which is digital signature, uh, as a solution. So you have to be creative. So after two years within the bureaucracy itself, you, you realize that it really needs the mental revolution that the president has been talking about? Yes, uh, at the root of all things uh, is mindset, right? Um, and we have to be honest, uh, because we're very rich in commodities. Uh, I think during the 10-year commodity boom from 2002 to circa 2012, uh, we got lazy. Right? We got lazy, we allowed ourselves to become inward looking. Uh, that is probably a tendency for most large countries like uh, you know, Indonesia and USA and India and China. It's just very difficult to generate a mindset that is internationally minded or outward looking. Uh, and however, uh, thankfully the commodities boom is long behind us and we are working hard to find alternative engines uh, of growth for the economy uh, and luck, as, as luck would have it uh, along comes the digital revolution which I think uh, creates a lot of new opportunity. One last question um, Indonesia does seem to sometimes be balancing between uh, economic protectionism on one side and a necessity to attract foreign direct uh, investment on the other side. Uh, what is your stand on this? Well, aren't, aren't we all uh, trying to balance between uh, those elements who want to close down and uh, turn inward and those elements that want to open up uh, and, uh, and be international? Um, look, I, 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 I'm a strong proponent of President Jokowi's uh, very practical, uh, realistic uh, outlook on life. Uh, as he pointed out uh, about two or three weeks ago, uh, the internet knows no borders. Um, we now live uh, effectively in a borderless world, right? Um, so it's an illusion that you can close yourself off or that you can protect. Uh, because what will happen is our own citizens will leave us behind. They will go to the internet, they will find the best products and the best services regardless where they are located or where they are based. That's why there is such urgency for us to deregulate and to modernize our bureaucracy and our rules and regulations so that it is easy and attractive to be in the formal sector, to be inside Indonesia. Because if we don't do that, everybody's just going to leave us. Uh, and move uh, their activity to cyberspace. And that is a reality. Thank you very much, Thomas Lembong. Thank you. Thank you for having me.